Today we're going to work on automatic pico hems and automatic pico hems with buttonholes in them. A lot of people think it can't be done, but it can, and I'm going to show you a really nifty little way to do that. I'm going to start with the hem, and I'm going to make this on my gauge swatch. That way I can get some double duty use out of it. Before we begin, I want to point out something. Um, normally, when we're doing pico hem, we would have two stitches in work on each side of the bed. That's because you can't sew a hole. And we need that extra stitch there for the seam. I've already selected the needle grouping. And as you can see, I have two needles in work on this end and two needles in work on this end. I'm going to just do a plain E-wrap cast on. I know that the main tension is going to be six. So I've set the tension dial on the carriage at four. And I'm going to knit four rows. was two rows. We need two more. Now bring all the alternate needles into work position and then everything forward. Now I'm going to knit six rows. Oh, and turn the tension dial up to five. It's probably a good idea to add weight. You could continue to pull the needles forward because we're going to take these weights off again in another four rows. This makes a very narrow hem. On the bigger children's sweaters, we'll go with a deeper one. And if you want to, even on this smaller size, you could. Because as you can see, this is going to be quite a short hem. Take off everything that's dangling, the weights, clothespins, anything that you have attached. Now, turn this up. On the extreme edge, there's a very short stitch. Now I'm just going to take the long loops and they will go on every other needle. We'll take that last loop on the end. To make this hang a little bit better with less flipping, and if you've knitted pico hems before, you know that sometimes they have a tendency to flip out. So what I'm going to do is knit one loose row. I'm at tension five, the main tension is at six. I'm going to go up to eight, knit one row. Now back to six. That just gives a little more yarn in the ceiling stitch, the ceiling row. And it does help a little bit to keep that from flipping. Okay. Now I am going to use this as my gauge swatch. So I'm going to unthread the carriage. And I'm going to knit two rows with contrast. Of 
clip that. And since I'm going to need stitch markers out of this very shortly, I'm going to just cut them right now while I'm at it. Reset the row counter. Okay, since this is a mid gauge machine, I'm using the yellow gauge scale. And that calls for 30 stitches, which you can see here, and 40 rows. So what I'm going to do is knit 20 rows. In case you're wondering what I'm doing with my hands, the camera is between me and the needle bed. And I'm trying to avoid hitting it. That's row 20, and we need 30 stitches between the markers, which means we need to pull out the 16th needle on each side of center zero. So here we have 10. We know that because these are the gray caps. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just lay your contrast color in <clears throat> and knit it through by hand. Same thing on this side, that's 10, 2, 4, 6. Knit it through by hand. And then knit another 20 rows. Okay, we're at 40 rows. I need to knit two more rows with contrast. the contrast and re-thread your main yarn and I'm going to knit eight rows actually I'm going to knit four rows and this is how we mark the swatch so that we know six months from now when we decide to finally knit our sweater that this was the tension we used Make an eyelet for each number on your stitch dial. In this case, I'm using tension six, so I'm going to transfer six stitches. I always do this on the left side of the bed, and then if I have a dot between numbers, I will put that over here on this side of the bed. Say I was knitting at 6.1, or six and a half, I would do this. But I'm not, and I don't want to confuse myself later. So we'll take that back out. Now, bring these needles back to work and knit another four rows. Turn the tension dial up as far as it will go and knit one row. Unthread the carriage. And clip the yarn. You readjust things a little bit. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that show you to bring the needles all the way forward and then pull them off in one smooth motion. I used to be able to do that. And I will agree, when your hands work right, it is a little faster. But 
my hands don't work as well as they did when I was 50. And I have learned to compensate for several things. This is one. So now I leave the stitches in the needle hooks. That way I can actually pull with this hand and with this hand. And as long as I keep my fingers up close under those stitches, I very rarely drop a stitch. Okay, this is where I marked for the tension, the number on the tension dial. This hem really should be blocked. Personally, I think any Pico hem should be blocked. Most yarns, if you're very careful, can take a small amount of steam. This is what we have. Now I'm going to get set up for the button band and I'm going to attach it to one side of this gauge swatch. I typically will do that because it keeps everything together in one place and I don't lose a whole lot of little samples and pieces. So. I will get set up and then I'll be back.